Welcome to Exposure on Writing in Prison. My name is Kate Meissner. I am the Prison and Justice Writing Program Director at PEN America, and I'm so happy to see you all here at this World Voices Festival event. So, without further ado, I'm very excited to welcome our amazing readers who have stepped in for the writers that can't be here to bring their work to you, and I'm so grateful to all of you for being here. to learn something new every day. Irish soda bread, one pound of flour, one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of salt, three-fourths cups of buttermilk. A photon means a packet of radiation. The western part of Lake Huron is polluted with algae. Sussurus means a whispering or rustling sound. Yesterday I spoke to Stephanie, who lives a few doors down the hall. I learned about her mother. One, was in a wheelchair because she had a bad hip and fibromyalgia. Two, was watching not only Stephanie's 10-year-old son, but also his three cousins, all under the age of four, because their mother is in treatment. I learned that Stephanie's husband has black and gray tattoos, all gotten while in prison, that covers his entire upper torso, from his chin to his belt level, and mostly depict demons. He is now in Texas and will be on parole until August. I asked her if she likes tattoos. She did. Stephanie is planning on going back to Texas once she is out of prison. And that's in December. I don't know why she's here. I don't share much of my own life with others. But then, my husband is not in prison and has no tattoos. And we don't have children. Just two half Siamese cats that are siblings and poor mousers. My home life lacks drama. In Ojibwe, the world for old, old woman means one that holds things together. It is a myth that MSG, a flavor enhancer, is bad for your health. The endangered pangolin is only found in Africa and Asia, and it looks like a walking pine cone. Millie Benson was the ghostwriter for Carolyn Keene and wrote most of the Nancy Drew series. I play cribbage with a petite woman who was a big drug dealer. She started using coke at the age of 12 and as a teen stole thousands of dollars in quarters by breaking into car wash money boxes. She's a heavy stakes casino regular. Her true vice is gambling. I work out with a sex offender. She slept with a 15 year old kid who mowed her lawn. That's a seven year offense. Kara stole a car. Christy embezzled, Misty assaulted with a knife. TJ killed her unborn child in an automobile accident while she was driving drunk. Gina held up in a house surrounded by the sheriff's department while threatening to kill herself with a loaded shotgun because she believes she had just killed her two youngest children. Not true. Isabel killed her abusive husband. I don't know how. I don't want to know. I never ask why people are here. It's none of my business. I stay away from people that try to pry into other people's crimes. I like to hear people's backstories, though, where they're from and what they like to do as a kid or in the past. One weekend, while walking in line on my way to the dining room, a very loose, loose term for chow hall, or what I refer to as the hit and miss because the food is inconsistently prepared, I follow a friend, again, loosely defined. She was in my playwriting class who has a red swastika that shows its top half, just above the back of her t-shirt neckline. What in the world would possess someone, anyone, to permanently mark themselves with a prominent sign of universal hate? I felt I could finally ask her because of our shared classes, the aforementioned playwriting, 
one where she wrote about a hippie couple in the 60s with Bonnie and Clyde tendencies who were running away from the police. When I say running, I mean motorcycling and a poetry class, lyric poetry, where her work seemed relationship-based. She didn't appear to be a racist or anti-Semitic or mean-spirited. Actually, she smiled a lot. She was kind. I asked her about her tattoo. She said, I was different then. I've changed. I don't know what I learned from that conversation, but I thought about it all afternoon. Once a white supremacist, always a white supremacist? Was she a fascist? Fascist? Is she a fascist? Was she a Nazi? Nazi? Is she a Nazi? Do I give Nazis more respect if I capitalize the word Nazi? The woman with the red swastika went to boot camp and now is gone. I guess I'll never really know. I do know she likes to draw goddesses and moons. I let go of my judgment. That is my lesson. I am surrounded by bad choices, bad situations, addiction. I try to figure out what I'm supposed to be learning within this college of disaster. I document what I see because I don't know what else to do with all that surrounds me. <laughs>